If you're watching this video, there's a really good chance you thought you were prepared to do really well on the grammar questions on the SAT. You thought you knew your grammar rules, or you figured you could just find the correct answer based off of what sounds right or feels right, and then you took a test. And you found yourself rereading the passage over and over, and three minutes had passed by, and you still had no idea what College Board was testing you on, and no idea which answer choice was correct. But if you learn the rules and how to spot the different question types, you can answer every single grammar question on the SAT in 30 seconds or less. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to do that for five of the most common grammar questions that you will see on your SAT. Now the first question type are misplaced modifiers. These are going to be incredibly easy to spot for two reasons. Number one, these answer choices are much longer than any other grammar question on the SAT. And number two, you will see this rotation in the subjects of each answer choice at the front of them. Once you see those two things, you know it's a modifier. Now all we have to do to get these right is ask ourselves the who or what question. You are simply going to look at the modifier, which is the portion that is preceding the comma. You're going to ask yourself who or what this could be describing. Who or what could be supported by biochemical analyses of over 2,000 skeletons from the Middle Ages? Well, vegetable and grains don't make any sense to be supported by biochemical analyses. Same thing with B and C, but findings from a study can be supported by biochemical analyses of over 2,000 skeletons from the Middle Ages. That's how we can see that D is correct. Now the next question type you're going to see is going to be quite obvious to spot. This is going to be names questions asking you about how to properly punctuate names. They're going to be super obvious because you're going to see a name in the answer choice. Now all you have to think about with these questions is you have to find the descriptive element preceding the name and ask yourself the question, could that descriptive element be referring to only one person or thing in the world, or could it be referring to more than one? Well, in this instance, in what you see almost always on the SAT, linguists could be referring to thousands of different people. Once that descriptive element could refer to more than one person, you cannot put commas around the names. You can only put commas around the names if this part preceding it is specific to one person like the very first president of the United States. Now, the next type you're going to see, you can find the correct answer to without ever having to read the passage. And these are subject verb agreement questions. Now, these are really important to understand how to spot, or you're going to be inappropriately applying the trick that we're going to talk about to tense questions or another really advanced type of question we're going to talk about later in the video. What you have to see to be able to apply this really nice trick is you need to see two verbs that are conjugated in the same tense but one is singular and one is plural. You could say he or she impacts, you could say they impact, those are the same tense. One is singular, one is plural. Once you do that, you can find the odd one out. You're gonna see here, we have three plural answers. They are impacting, they have impacted, they impact, versus one singular, the odd one out, the singular one is correct. If you saw the reverse pattern, then you would have a plural correct answer if there were three singular ones. You can find the correct answer without ever reading the passage. Otherwise, you need to identify that the essay is the subject, and you would say the essay impacts, and that's how you could see that A is correct. Now, the next question type we're going to cover is the most frequently missed of all of the question types we're going to cover in this video. So before we work through this and I kind of give away what it's about by how we're going to name this, see if you can pause the video and figure out the correct answer. Now, most of you will have picked answer choices B, C, or D, and these are all incorrect. The answer choice, which sounds weirdest to most students, is actually the correct one. Now, this is what I call an interrupted independent clause. What the SAT is testing you on is in an independent clause, you can only have one active verb or you have to have a list of items for multiple active verbs to be correct. Now, the way you can spot these is you will see one answer choice with an ING and you will see three active verbs, things that could create an independent clause. Now, the reason I call this an interrupted independent clause is the way you can spot you're dealing with this question is if you can already piece together an independent clause in the sentence, you're going to have to pick the ING. And that's what's happening here. We could say this hypothesis cannot stand unless other explanations can first be ruled out. That's an independent clause. It works on its own. Once you identify that, we don't have any list here, so we cannot put in another active verb. So we have to use this ing. Now, these are technically called participles. All it's doing is creating a descriptive phrase about the hypothesis, so it's not putting it in action. It's just describing it. But all you want to do, watch out for the ing versus three active verbs. If you can find your interrupted independent clause, you have to pick that ing. 
Now the final question type, we're going to talk about clauses a little bit more here. So if you're not familiar with those, at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some free resources you can use so you can master identifying independent clauses, dependent clauses, and freezes and the rules around joining those because these are the most frequently tested rules on the SAT. Now our final question type is going to be sentence structure questions. And this is the most common question type of all of the questions we've covered in this video. You can sometimes see three or four of these on any given SAT, so this can make an enormous impact in your score. Now we can very easily spot this as a sentence structure question because we see one of the three ways we can join two full sentences, two independent clauses together. This is our comma in fanboys. Once we see this, we always wanna to check to see if this answer is correct by simply seeing if we have an independent clause before and after. If we do, that's gonna tell us we have to pick this answer. This is the only possible grammatically correct way of joining them. And that's what happens here. Before, this entire portion that I'm underlining in blue is an independent clause, it can stand on its own. And after, this is also an independent clause, and that's how we can see that A must be correct. These will both be run on sentences, this is a comma splice. Now, if you look at stuff like this and you're like, well, this doesn't feel like it's independent and you wanna learn the rules about how to spot independent clauses, dependent clauses, join them and get lots more practice, please check out the free trial to my ultimate SAT course. There are really in-depth lessons in there. They're gonna help you master all of those and it can make an enormous impact in your grammar score. So the link to sign up for that, you do not need any credit cards, it is truly free, is in the description to this video. I hope this video has really helped you out. If you guys have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments.